just be good friends with Jesus. You know, I, I don't think that's terminology that's off-putting for anyone. If, if it is, then... Hey everybody, it's John Matthew from Worship With Us here. want to wish you a very happy and blessed new year. Welcome to 2021. You know, for the last six months, we've been releasing music almost every week without fail with the hope that there'll be a tool and an encouragement for you to draw close to Jesus and to worship Him, to spend time resting in His presence. And so as we start the new year, I thought it would be good for us to think about what it means to draw close, what it means to be intimate with Jesus. And so I have my friend Dan in Japan, uh, had the chance to sit down with him recently and just chat some of those thoughts through. What is intimacy with God? How does intimacy with God work? How do we develop those things? And uh, he shared some great insight. And so in just a minute, we're going to hear that interview and hear some of those thoughts. And hopefully that will be an encouragement to you, an inspiration to you as we start this new year to rest with Jesus and to find restoration and peace and joy in his presence. Uh, and on Friday, Dan and I are going to be releasing some music that we've worked on together. Now, this is my first international collaboration. Very cool. Dan is a great friend of mine. We met here in Ontario, Canada, but he's moved to Japan and he's serving the Lord in Japan, has a beautiful family and uh, a great ministry over there. And so we've been able to collaborate overseas, which is great. And I would love for you to check out the music that comes out on Friday. And I trust that that will be an encouragement to you. And also, this is kind of like the week of birthdays. It's Asaph Instrumental's half birthday, but even more importantly, it's Dan's birthday on Friday. The day that the music comes out is his birthday. And so even right now in the comments, if you wouldn't mind, it would mean the world to me if you would just drop a comment down there and say, happy birthday, Dan, and then check out the music that we release on Friday. God's good. And in 2021, we're expecting great things from him because he's good to us and he loves us. Without further ado, let's check out this interview with Dan and then trust that you will be blessed as you rest in Jesus. Well, hello, my friend. I'm thankful that you've taken a few minutes to come and chat with us today about Jesus and about intimacy with God. We're trying to do these interviews about once a month, and uh, you were the first person to come to mind when I was thinking about who could we talk to about intimacy with God, because uh, I know that you are a passionate pursuer of Jesus. So, could you tell us even just a little bit right off the top, what exactly is intimacy with God? I would say in a summary, intimacy with God is just closeness with him that builds over time. And it, Jesus talked about something in John chapter 15, uh, that he is the vine and we are the branches. And that picture describes the branches being completely dependent on the vine for life. And it, it shows that the, the life of the vine is flowing through the branches. So in light of that picture, uh, I would say intimacy with Jesus means that we dwell with him and he dwells in us and we bear fruit that brings glory to God. Awesome. I love it. So you've talked about fruit. My next question was going to be, why is that important? Uh, why is intimacy with God important? If we're supposed to be bearing the kingdom and bringing Jesus to the world, uh, bearing fruit is important. Actually, in, in chapter 15, verse 8, it uh, talks about that. Um, as, and it says that that's the proof that we are his disciples. And so the importance of intimacy, I would say, is, uh, well, first of all, we dwell with Jesus. He dwells with us and we bear fruit. But that's the proof. If we don't have that, what is the proof that we're actually disciples? Uh, the, the alternative is a lifeless branch. Uh, and that doesn't, you know, I was thinking about it. It doesn't sound to me like Christian life at all. I think it's interesting that the only way that Christians can bear fruit is when they're attached to Jesus because it's Jesus that bears the fruit in them. It's nothing that they can produce in and of themselves. 
It's as they're in relationship with him and as they're walking with him, as they're dwelling on the word and allowing the spirit to well up inside them that the fruit is even able to come out in the first place. So how do we develop intimacy with God? How do we go deeper with him? It's a bit tempting to try and slap on some like A plus B equals C kind of thing here, but uh, I don't want to necessarily uh, give a form of what that looks like. But I would say, first of all, it's good to start with just asking Jesus. Like, go before him in honesty. And you, if you recognize and, and see that this is important, go before him and just say, Jesus, I, I want to abide with you. I want to be intimate, intimate with you. But I don't know how. Please show me. Teach me. And he can do that. Uh, I think that we need to have a willingness to be pruned. We need to be. We need to have a willingness to, that parts of our lives are going to be changed, and we need to let go of stuff. Um, and for for some practical points, though, um, I think that we need to live prayerfully. We need to live by the Spirit. We need to pray in the Spirit. Uh, so, as an example, when you do something, are you depending on Jesus for that? You know, when you go to work in the morning, are you, and you have a, and you have a big project going, are you depending on Jesus for his wisdom? When you um, go home at night and you see your family, and you're, let's say you're a father, are you depending on Jesus to be the father, you know, that these kind of things require prayer. I think just being connected with God. Uh, so abiding, dwelling with Jesus, is a choice, and we must decide to do things that expose ourselves to Him, and keep ourselves in contact with Him. There's a verse in Ephesians that I found to be one of the really sweet verses to come across and take hold of. And at the same time, it's kind of bittersweet. It says that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so when we're in Christ, we have everything that we need. We have all of God dwelling inside us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have every blessing that he can pour out on us. Uh, and so the sweet side is we've got it all. And the sour side is that we've got it all. There's no more to come. It's all ours and so that process of abiding and living prayerfully and just remaining connected with Jesus, that's what that word abide means, right? To remain. So as we remain in contact and in communication with him, it's an experience of uh, understanding and grasping and taking hold of those things that he's already placed within us, already given to us as part of our blessing in Jesus. There's another thing that I would say is, can be overlooked is that it's very, very important for us to do this whole thing with other Christians. Like, we, God has designed this thing called the church, and we, and he's given us gifts so that we can essentially point each other to Jesus and experience him. And so, if we're not doing that, and if we have a kind of solo Christianity, um, I think we're missing out. I think that the kind of intimacy we could experience is is going to be lacking. Yeah, absolutely. Christian faith is designed to be lived out in a community of grace, right? Yeah, brothers and sisters living and loving together. Um, so we're a worship channel. We want to provide instrumental music every week that will allow people to soak in the presence of Jesus, to worship him, to adore him to encounter his spirit at work in their lives. Uh, what is worship's role in finding intimacy with God and developing that relationship with him? Well, I think that um, a lot of worship songs actually echo the kind of commitment and sacrifice. It, it has all that terminology. So it, it echoes all that for our side. 
that part of us that intimacy requires. So worship then becomes an opportunity of being dependent and, and having contact with Jesus. And so if we're being honest with our worship, you know, sometimes we can sing and not we're not being honest or we're not really singing from the deep parts of us. But if we're being honest, uh, it's a really great opportunity to know him and be dependent on him. And I think in that exchange, uh, he will change us and he will make himself known to us too. Awesome. Would you be willing to share with us a special encounter or a special moment that you shared with Jesus, some personal experience of intimacy with the Holy Spirit that was uh, memorable for you and significant for your faith journey? Well, there are a lot. Um, and I want to share something that happened recently. Um, I'm here in Japan, and it's sometimes discouraging. Um, Sometimes I feel like my purpose being here is not very clear. And um, recently, I think it was in November, I went on a walk just to talk to the Lord about things that were heavy on my heart. And I felt burdened. Um, but I was just being honest with Him. And a lot of that probably sounded like, God, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know how or I don't know what. And uh, in the midst of that, um, he encouraged me and he showed me a, a part of who he's made me to be. And that just overwhelmed me. Um, and I... I came home feeling empowered and no, I, I didn't have that kind of burden anymore, that heaviness from before. And that it also very, yeah, gave me a lot of clarity. So this might be kind of an example of yeah, just abiding in Jesus. It's I, I connect with him and want to have him flow through me. I know that you've given up a lot to move to Japan and serve Jesus there. I know that you've gained a lot. You have a beautiful family and a new house and lots of good stuff going on, but uh, we're still praying that you will take the whole nation for the kingdom of God and that people will be saved all around you. Trust him for amazing things as you are persistent uh, in pursuing the call, whatever that looks like. And, uh, just love your heart for the nation of Japan. Uh, I have one more question for you before we wrap up here. Uh, and it's maybe a little bit uh, specific to a certain population that might be watching this video. Uh, sometimes men are creeped out or put off by the word intimacy or by the whole idea of intimacy generally and then intimacy with God. It's like this weird concept and either scary or gross or both. Um, what's the deal with intimacy with God and men? And why is it important for men? How do we wrap our brains around that so that it's not this uh, hands-off kind of thing? Well, first of all, you should have a beard. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Um, Although Jesus does love you more if you have a beard, so... No, I think, um, I think um, just be good friends with Jesus. You know, I, I don't think that's terminology that's off-putting for anyone. If if it is, then I don't know what to say. There must be some reason why. There must be some reason why. So, yeah, be good friends with Jesus and talk with him and be with him. I mean, you just think about any friendship that you have. If you have a good friend, you want to share with them in, in things of life. And I think for men specifically, we like to do things together and not talk so much. Uh, so I, I think you can do that with Jesus too. Uh, if you don't really know how to pray well or pray, some people pray for a long time and maybe you 
don't know how. That's okay. The important thing is just be honest. And if you just want to do things with Jesus, you can. He has lots to do. The other, I was also thinking about like, kind of what would this vine and branch picture look like uh, today? Because uh, I don't have any vines laying around anywhere that I can look at, but um, I have a lot of things plugged in in my house. Uh, and I think about like a lamp and it will produce light only if it's plugged into the wall socket. And uh, I think in a similar way, uh, we, we need to be plugged into Jesus. If we're not, then we're not going to bear light. We're not going to produce light and we're not going to produce fruit. Or if you want, you could use more power tools like you are a saw that needs to be plugged in <laughs> <laughs> well played i often think about david and his mighty men and uh the way that they went and did exploits with one another they got their swords and their shields and they went off and they tore through enemy lines and uh david's mighty men, his good friends, the people that he spent his time with, that he shared his life with, that he shared his food with. Uh, they loved each other. And uh, the one story that comes to mind is when his mighty men heard that he wanted a drink from a particular well. And so a couple of them took off and they broke through enemy lines and they brought him back a cup of water from the well. And they did it because they loved him. They did it because he was their friend and he was their king. They got to do exploits. It wasn't mushy. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't just a romantic. Oh, bleh. they did exploits and they went to war uh, because they were intimate with their king, with because they knew him and they had been known by him, and they walked through life together that way. Hey Dan, any final thoughts on intimacy with God before we sign off here? Well, I think back to something that I said that. Um, if we're not close with Jesus and, and you could substitute that word close for a number of words intimacy, abiding, dwelling um, if we're not doing it we'll just be lifeless and I think that God really has so much for us and in, in, it's our choice what do you want? What do you want? Mm. And and so if you want intimacy, then I would say the vine is always flowing. Just connect. Awesome. Hey, Dan, thanks so much for hanging out and for sharing your insights. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your life and being transparent with us. And uh, really just appreciate what you got to say about being intimate with God, being connected to God and living life with him. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, God bless you. And you as well. Talk to you soon.